It's time to create your first design. Start by clicking on this button and choosing your design type. In this video, we'll begin with a presentation, one of Canva's most commonly used document types, and use it to explore the editor, its features, and capabilities. This is truly the space where all your ideas come to life. Before we start designing, let's take a look around the editor. To add a new page to your document, click the plus button here, or duplicate a page like this. With the page selected, you can also hit Command D on your keyboard. See your pages in grid view here, which is handy for multi-page documents and bulk edits. Want to delete a page? Just select it and click the trash icon in the floating menu. Or you can just press delete on your keyboard. Of course, you can always undo mistakes here or use Command Z on your keyboard. This hides the page thumbnails, giving you a different view where you can scroll down through the pages. It's up to you how you prefer to work. Over here, you have the zoom slider and an option to make your design full screen. To the left is a side panel where you can find resources to use in your project. The design tab contains templates layouts, and styles that can be applied to your whole design. We'll come back to this later. The Elements tab holds an incredibly large selection of graphics, video, charts, and so much more. Beneath that, you have the Text tab, Brand tab, and Uploads tab, which we'll cover in more detail later. The Draw tab allows you to quickly illustrate, mark up, and highlight things on the page. The Projects tab gives you quick access to other files and folders. And finally, the Apps tab opens up Canva's App Marketplace, home of hundreds of apps allowing you to streamline your workflow just the way you like it. We won't spend much time here during this course, but exciting new apps are constantly coming out, so it's definitely worth exploring. Let's explore some useful options in the file menu. Here, you can create a new design, save it to a folder, make a copy, and even download your design. In settings, click show rulers and guides to display measurements on the X and Y axis. You can click and drag in a guide like this. Helpful when you need to make sure everything is aligned correctly. You'll notice that when you move objects around, smart guides will appear and the object will snap to any guide you've created. To move a guide, click and drag it into position. Don't worry, these guides won't show up when you download or print. If guides are getting in the way, just hide them by pressing Shift R. You can lock and clear guides completely in the right click menu. Showing margins is a good way to provide some simple guidelines for maintaining a balanced and well-structured design. Resize and Magic Switch is a paid feature allowing you to quickly resize your design to other document sizes or switch to a completely new format or language with the help of AI. It's a huge time saver. Here's the previously mentioned Undo button located next to the Redo button. If you hover, you'll see the keyboard shortcuts. Note the Save icon here. Canva auto-saves when you're working online. Hover over this icon to make sure you're currently online and that all changes are saved. Over here is the name of your design. The design is untitled, so let's add a name.
Access insights here, like how many times your design has been viewed. It's currently zero because we haven't shared access to anyone. The same goes for comments. After you shared it, you'll be able to come here to quickly review all comments. Share it here. Just type in their email address and allow them to edit, comment, or view. You can also change the access here. Copy the collaboration link and send that to people giving them instant access. In the share menu, you can also download your design or share on social media. And here are the print order options. In Canva, printing and delivery are just a click away with a 100% happiness guarantee. And finally, more shows all the remaining options for publishing your design. Now, let's get back to customizing our template and explore the Design tab. Here, you'll find three options, templates, layouts, and styles. In templates, you can search for an alternative design based on your current document type. This is a presentation document type, so that's what it's showing me. Click on one to see a preview. These templates have a single page, while others feature multiple pages crafted in a consistent style, like this one. You can click on one page and it'll replace your current slide. Or you can choose all the pages here. You can also just apply the style to what you already have. Back on the Design tab menu, you'll see another option for styles. This has color combinations, font sets, and you can use styles from your recent designs. Really handy if you're trying to create a cohesive feel across several documents. The final menu item here is layouts. This uses AI to suggest different layouts for your current page. This is helpful if you feel like your pages are feeling too similar. Okay, that's the editor tour. Are you ready to start designing? Bounding boxes appear when you hover over page elements. When an element is selected, you'll see handles and a floating toolbar appear. Clicking and dragging these circular corner handles allows you to make things bigger or smaller. These other handles allow you to adjust the size of the bounding box. Rotate by clicking and dragging in the direction you want to rotate. And click and drag the element to move it. Double-click any text to begin editing it. Once you're done, click the page background to deselect everything. To group elements together, select an element, hold the Shift key, and click another, then click Group. Now, if you try to move one, the group will also move. To ungroup elements, select it and click Ungroup. In the floating toolbar, you'll see some quick actions like comment, duplicate, or trash. Click here and you'll get the full menu. Most are pretty obvious, but Layer will adjust visibility for overlapping elements, moving them up or down in the visual layer stack. Click on Show Layers and you can see that visual layer stack and rearrange as needed. Here, you can go to the Arrange button which has more options for aligning objects to the page and to each other. In addition to the floating toolbar, certain items will have additional editing options in this larger toolbar. You can change color, crop, flip, or even animate elements. We'll dive deeper into this later on. And that's your introduction to Canvas Editor and the start of your first design. The best way to build your confidence and knowledge is to continue playing and exploring. So why not take a break from this course and finish off your design? Incorporate some images, tweak the text, adjust some sizes and rotate other elements. Just have fun.